ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب اليه ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom we praise seek help from and guidance we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of ourselves and the evil of our actions whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides none can misguide and whosoever he misguides and leaves to be misguided none can guide and i testify that there is no god but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is alone without any partners and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his servant and his messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and die not except in a state of Islam as Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا O mankind fear your lord who created you from a single person and from him he created his wife and from them both he created many men and women and fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and do not cut the relations of the wombs kinship surely allah is ever all watcher over you and he subhanahu wa ta'ala also says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha wa qulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa may yuti'i allaha wa rasulahu faqad faza fawzan azima o you who believe fear allah and speak always the truth he will direct you to the righteous good deeds and he will forgive you your sins and whosoever obeys Allah and his messenger he has indeed achieved a great achievement dear brothers and sisters i decided to speak on the subject of the shahada of the testimony la ilaha illallah the testimony that there is no worthy of worship other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the correct speech on this topic has been little mentioned by people who have spoken about religion in this language and who are attributed to duaat callers and to the da'wah to the call to islam i have realized to my regret and astonishment that the students who are finishing their second year of studying arabic language or who are in their first or second year of their islamic studies cannot enumerate the conditions of shahada or moreover they do not know exactly how many conditions of shahada there are In this way we realize that people who have been learning for years from these duaat they have learned the details of the conditions of wudu of the ablution conditions of ghusl haid nifas but that they haven't learned much from the foundations from the foundations of this religion yes it is true that just knowing the conditions of the shahada will not save a man from jahannam and it will not make him enter paradise if he does things that oppose these words but we have seen that not only the followers of these duaat but also these duaat shuyukh themselves they fall into many things that negate la ilaha illallah that negate the very foundations of the faith by propagating kufr and shirk or lightly going over it or taking for their protectors or for their leaders those who are deep in shirk and kufr No matter how one understands this I'm convinced that there is little talk about these words and in these times when people have skipped tawhid they should not be taught things that come later as some others have constantly taught them about tahara in details without teaching them about things that are the foundation constantly frightening them by saying that by learning this they will step into takfir for they will realize that there are kafirs around them and that there are murtadun apostates thus not teaching them these things for reasons known to them the words of shahada la ilaha illallah are the greatest words that allah has ever revealed to his messengers and his prophets humans and jinns since the beginning of the creations 
These are the most powerful words any man has ever said in the entire history of the human race. They are the most valuable dhikr that a person can say. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, the best dua, the best supplication is the dua of Arafah. And the best that I and any prophet before me have said is La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. The values of pronunciation and mentioning these words are great. Because of these words, Allah created creations. As the Almighty said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create jinn or men for any other reason except to worship me. That is, I did not create jinn or men for any other reason except to worship me, to worship me alone. To confess Tawheed, to make me one, to acknowledge only me as the Lord, to attribute the qualities of perfection and the most beautiful names only to me. And what is the most important, after Rububiyyah and after al Asma'i was Sifat, to direct and devote all their worship only to me, to make me, Allah, one in their ibadah, in their belief, in their words. and in their deeds. Because of these words, Allah sent down the books. Because of these words, Allah sent messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ And we have sent a messenger to every nation with the words, وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ Worship Allah Do ibadah to Allah وَجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ And stay away from Taghut. Because of these words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Jannah, paradise and its beauties. And we know that except the mu'min, no one will enter Jannah. So it is reserved for the mu'minun, for the believers. Allah's forgiveness, Allah's Jannah itself, they are reserved for the mu'minun. Nobody else will enter Jannah except the one to whom Allah has mercy upon. For no one will enter Jannah by his deeds. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, so they asked him, well, not even you, Messenger of Allah? And he said, not even I, if Allah does not envelop me with his mercy. But to whom will Allah have mercy on? If he does not have mercy on his messengers, their companions, and all those who follow them in goodness until the day of judgment. Allah Jalla wa Ala created Jannah and its beauties because of these words, because of the words La ilaha illallah. Because of these words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Jahannam, created hellfire and its punishments, of curse for the opponents of these words. Were it not for these words, it would never have been revealed who are those who deserve Sakar, who are those who deserve Sa'ir, Who are those to deserve a blazing fire that will eat their intestines? And all that by which Allah describes the horrors of hell. I ask Allah to keep us away from this description and I ask Him to put walls between us and between hell as it is already described that there will be separate inhabitants of fire and inhabitants of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed jihad, struggle, and fight in his way because of these words, saying, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ الطَّاغُوتِ Those who believe, they fight in the way of Allah, and those who disbelieve, they fight in the way of Taghut. So Allah prescribed jihad in his way to tempt the believers, to tempt the mujahideen. Allah prescribed love and hatred for these words. Allah prescribed al-wala wal-bara. Al-wala, devotion, loyalty, love, friendship, helping. And then al-bara, disassociation, renunciation, hatred, enmity, isolation and struggle against those who oppose these words. This is the greatest goal of the words la ilaha illallah. And not only the words, but what those words carry and what they refer to, what they imply. It is the greatest goal of all goals, the greatest goal in human life, in whole existence of the human race and dunya, a goal that makes all goals seem worthless, insignificant before it. It is a goal that must not be trampled on, 
a goal that no other goal should be assumed if it is ignored. This is the greatest benefit, because the benefit of Tawheed is the greatest benefit of all the benefits and all the benefits that oppose it, that oppose Tawheed, they become worthless and unjustified. Nowadays, we have come across people who say that benefit for Muslims can justify deeds of shirk and that certain people who sit in parliaments, even though they do acts of kufr and shirk, they are Muslims all the time and they are good Muslims. They say they are good Muslims. However, it goes contrary to the definition mentioned by the ulama, by the scholars, which says there is no benefit that can and that should be put in front of the benefit of the shahada la ilaha illallah. So if the benefit of the shahada la ilaha illallah will be overthrown, it must not be mentioned and it must not justify the demolition and destruction of the shahada la ilaha illallah and what it refers to. By saying these words, a man, if he really understands what they mean, what words of the shahada mean, by saying these words, a man's blood and possessions become protected and he becomes a Muslim because of the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is narrated from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Umirtu an uqatil an nasa hatta yashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah wa yuqimu salata wa yu'tu zakata fa idha fa'alu thalika asamu mini dima'ahum wa amwalahum I have been ordered to fight against the people until they testified that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and until they establish or start praying and start giving zakah and when they do so they have preserved from me their blood and their possessions their money except when the law of Islam requires وَحِسَابُهُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى and their accountabilities before Allah Almighty. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that he was sent before the Day of Judgment to fight against the people. To fight against the people until they say لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ مُحَمَدُ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ until they start praying and start giving zakah. These words have so much influence they have so much importance, so much effect, that when a disbeliever says them, of course, if he knows what they mean, because it is not enough just to say them, his blood and his property become protected, and he has the rights that all Muslims have, and he has obligations that all Muslims have. He enters into the brotherhood of Islam, and into the generality of the word that all Muslims are brothers. Because of these words, because of the words La ilaha illallah, Jannah was created. And because of La ilaha illallah, Hellfire, Jahannam was created. And because of these words, of the words La ilaha illallah, people will enter Jannah or Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah la yaghfiru ay yushraka bih. Verily, Allah doesn't forgive that partners should be set up with him in worship. We must not say that one is considered equal to him, because to consider someone equal to Allah is one thing, and to make someone equal to him is another thing. Allah will not forgive that partners should be set up with him in worship, in ibadah, that anyone is made equal to him, be it in heart, in tongue, in speech, or in deeds, and he will forgive what is less than that. Because he said, after he said that he will not forgive shirk, he said, But he forgives except that, anything else, anything lesser than that, to whomever he pleases, to whomever he wants to forgive. So if a man preserves his tawheed, if a man preserves la ilaha illallah, if he runs away from shirk that destroys tawheed, the man will enter paradise, he will enter Jannah, and Allah guarantees to the one who performs shirk that he will not be forgiven. It is important to mention that a person should make Allah one in his beliefs, in his speech, and in his deeds, and to stay away from shirk, to flee from shirk. And for that reason, a Muslim should learn the dua, the supplication, the dhikr that protects him from shirk.
And previously, in many lectures and gatherings, we never heard someone from those du'at, from those shuyukh, that he asked his listeners, those to whom he directs his da'wah. We have not heard any of the shuyukh to ask people, does anyone know the du'a by which he protects himself against shirk? Does anyone supplicate by that du'a that protects a person from shirk? What is the greatest harm? If we know that the greatest benefit is the shahada, what is the greatest harm? Certainly the greatest harm in the existence is to make someone or something equal to Allah. And it is really strange and sad, and it is really one of the strongest proofs that we support our claim with that the importance of the word La ilaha illallah was not mentioned except by the way, except quickly, roughly, that only the best students at the madrasa, at the universities, may today know roughly to mention some of the conditions of La ilaha illallah. Whoever understands the meaning of the words La ilaha illallah and whoever acts upon them will enter paradise, will enter Jannah. Shahada La ilaha illallah are the words that will erase all bad deeds, all sins except shirk, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء الله certainly will not forgive that partners should be set up with him in worship but he will forgive except that anything else to whom he pleases to whom he wants to forgive if a person does not have tawheed he will not benefit from the good deeds he does because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَى مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ We will approach to their deeds. We shall turn to whatever deeds they did and we shall make such deeds as scattered floating particles of dust which testifies to us that these people, the disbelievers, really have good deeds. Their deeds exist as good deeds but that on the day of judgment a person has nothing to ask for without the shahada la ilaha illallah and if he was a disbeliever Allah will reward him for it in this world as the messenger of Allah sallallahu said explaining this to the assembled companions on one occasion saying that a disbeliever who was conditionally speaking good who was good who was humble who was honest who has the amana who fulfills his word that for all this he will have a reward in this world, in dunya, and that in the hereafter, in the akhirah, he will have nothing to expect, because he was not from the Ahlul Iman, he was not from those who fulfilled the arkan and conditions of La ilaha illallah, he did not enter Islam. Shahada, La ilaha illallah, is a word that will erase all sins lesser than shirk, and the importance of its meaning of the meaning of the shahada is so great as mentioned in the hadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Musa alayhi salatu wa salam asked Allah azza wa jalla to teach him the words with which will he glorify him Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said anna Musa alayhi salam qala ya rabbi alimni dhikran ad'uka wa adhkuruka bih O my Lord teach me the words with which I will glorify you and mention you قال الله جل وعلا له يا موسى قل لا إله إلا الله. So Allah said to him to Musa عليه السلام, O Musa, say لا إله إلا الله. But Musa عليه السلام said, قال يا ربي كل عبادك يقولون هذا. O my Lord, all your slaves, all your servants say this. قال الله جل وعلا يا موسى لو أن السماوات السبعة وآمرهن غير والأراضين السبعة وآمرهن وضعن في كفة ووضعت لا إله إلا الله في كفة لمالت بهن لا إله إلا الله So Allah said O Musa say لا إله إلا الله For if the seven heavens and those who are in them besides me and seven earths were placed on one scale and if the words لا إله إلا الله were placed on the other scale they, they, heavens and the earth would be overwhelmed by the words La ilaha illallah. End of the riwayah. So these words do not mean, they do not express that there is no master, Lord, other than Allah. They do not mean only 
that there is no one greater, that there is no one more powerful than Allah. So not only Allah's oneness in his rububiyya, authority, creation, power, nor only his oneness in his names and perfect attributes, but his oneness in the right to ibadah of his slaves. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say, I did not create jinn and men except to acknowledge me, nor except to believe in me, nor except to understand my greatness. But I did not create, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ I did not create jinn and men for no other reason except إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ except in order to do ibadah to me, to worship me. These words which Allah revealed to Musa alayhi salam were said even earlier and addressed to their importance and value by Nuh alayhi salam. When Nuh alayhi salam on his deathbed said to his son in the wasiyah, in his will, أَمُرُكَ بِلَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ I command you, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ السَّمَوَاتِ السَّبْعَةِ وَالْأَرَضِينَ السَّبْعَةِ لَوْ وُضِعَتْ فِي كَثَّةِ وَوُضِعَتْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي كَثَّةِ لَرَجَحَتْ بِهِنَّ I command you, لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ O my son, because if the seven heavens and the seven earths were placed on one scale, and if لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ were placed on another scale, they would prevail. The words لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ will prevail. This was the wasiyah, this was the will of Nuh alayhi salam to his son. The words la ilaha illallah would prevail because of the greatness and of the importance of these words, because of their meaning, because of the fadail, of the merits, because of the complete forgiveness through them, because of the huge reward for those who embrace them, who understand these words, who firmly believe in them, who are convinced of their meaning, who will love these words and members of these words, those who believe in them and carry them in their hearts, because all of that we must make an effort to understand these words. Those who are sincere, those who are truthful and persistent in their acting upon these words, for them there will be thawab, there will be rewards, forgiveness, mercy and kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because of the great punishment and wrath of Allah, because of the misfortune and ruin, we must make an effort to understand these words and to complete the conditions of these words. This is certainly not easy. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu has said, قَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٌ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ You asked about a great thing, but it is easy for one to whom Allah makes it easy. In addition to the importance and greatness of these words, throughout history and even today at these times, we see that these words, this shahada, la ilaha illallah, this testimony, have been attacked throughout history and these words are still being attacked today. And some people have tried and managed to distort the meaning of these words in many circles of people and in many minds of people and to give to the meaning of these words false interpretations. False interpretations by many delusional groups and followers of desire and also by unbelieving secularists. Why do we say from unbelieving secularists? Because secularists are those who try to set up their ulama, to set up their scholars, ulama of castles and palaces in their countries, in their taghut, dictatorial regimes, scholars for dollars, paid scholars who will educate their students that la ilaha illallah is only for the mosque, that la ilaha illallah is only for dhikr, that it has nothing to do with life. And then these disciples, the so-called tulab, students of knowledge and shuyukh, so-called scholars, they will educate the youth, they will teach them that la ilaha illallah, its meaning and the beauty of its pronunciation is valid and useful when it thunders or when you take a deep breath and then you, let's suppose, rely on Allah or for some of the moments of, let's say, piety in the people who ascribe themselves to Islam. Such were deceived once by communists, atheists, and today by secularists, that Allah's religion, the religion of Islam, and that the words of Shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, are into mosques, behind the mosque doors, for a man to do dhikr, to mumble in it, and to do whatever he wants in the mosque, but when he comes out, disbelievers hold the power and authority. It is important 
to the Tagut and the Mushrikun that these words have no effectiveness in the life of a Muslim except in the very moment of the act of Ibadah and only Ibadah of Salah only in the narrowest sense and meaning of the word Ibadah as many have narrowed the meaning of that word and Ibadah is a much, much broader term these words La ilaha illallah their meaning, their importance and value what they refer to throughout history and even today this happens these words have been distorted their meaning have been distorted and given false interpretations by unbelieving secularists by Sufi then from Jahmi and Murji even today's so-called Salafis with their traps, conspiracies, plans and misinterpretations with which they want to remove the true meaning of the Shahada intended by the text and words of the Shahada because the words of the Shahada La ilaha illallah are intended to act upon rather than to crack the tongue in their pronunciation the words of the Shahada are not intended to be believed in only with the heart and what they want is to reduce the Shahada and its meaning only to the tongue and maybe to the heart of course in order to be a Muslim a man must believe with his heart and he must say the Shahada with his tongue but the crown of all this must be the deeds of the body the acts of the body in order for a person to be judged to be a Muslim in order for a person to be characterized as a Muslim in order to save his honor his blood and his property he must do deeds because a healthy heart must encourage him to do deeds that will indicate to his correct Iman and his realization of what the two Shahada, the two testimony refer to. The disciples and followers of this school, the false Salafis, they want to influence on the followers of Tawheed Da'wah in all parts of the world. They want them to act upon the word of La ilaha illallah as if Shahada were just some letters coming out of our tongues when we pray, when we say dhikr in the masjid. As if the Shahada are only words that are devoid of any meaning in a person's life and that they have no effect on a person's heart, depriving them of this wonderful faith and depriving Islam of deeds. But how, when we know that the true meaning of the word Islam is istislam, obedience or devotion, obedience to the one and only Allah Jalla wa Ala and ibadah to Him, ibadah, and ibadah is all that Allah loves and is pleased with from public deeds and secret deeds. As we see, acts, deeds are also mentioned in the definition of ibadah mentioned in the translation of the meaning of the word Islam, obedience and devotion, and how obedience can only be by, only by tongue, by heart, that the tongue is subdued, devoted and obedient, and that he does acts of disobedience to Allah, Jalla that the body does acts that nullify those words. These, therefore, do not treat the Shahada in the way it should, they do not give Shahada la ilaha la its true meaning. They do not make Shahada the manhaj, methodology of man's whole life, a complete system and a way to change for the better, to change society and to bring today's societies out of the darkness of shirk into the light of Tawheed. From the zulm of Jahiliyyah to the justice of Islam and from the ibadah to the makhluqat, no matter what these are and what kind of following, obedience of worship they were. From the worship of creatures to the worship of Allah the One, without any partners, without any companions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they often use a hadith, interpreting them in their own special way, talking only one or two hadith on a particular topic, not looking at not paying attention to other hadith that explain that hadith and that specify that generalized evidence. We know that Rasulullah was offered power and prestige, wives, wealth by the mushrikun. Everything was offered to him, to the Prophet Muhammad on his way of temptation, on his way of delivering the message to the ummah. Everything was offered to him only to give up, to leave those words. They offered him everything just to give up his mission. And his mission was worship Allah and stay away from the Taghut 
واجتنبوا الطاغوت worship Allah and stay away from the طاغوت or لا إله إلا الله there is no God but Allah there is no one worthy of worship except Allah there is no true معبود there is no one who deserves عبادة of people everything was given to him to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم only to give up this meaning and he refused everything Everything was worthless to him. Everything is null and void if La ilaha illallah is to be abandoned. Everything is null and void if it is necessary to give up La ilaha illallah. After that, after all his firmness and after rejecting all their offers, he did not only lose what he could gain, he did not only lose the power he could so easily attain, He did not lose only the influence and power and money and positions, keys of the Kaaba that he could get. No, he had lost what he already had before, before the da'wah. He saw temptations on the way of bearing the burden of these words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَا مَا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Do you think that you will enter Jannah? And what was befallen, those who were before you, has not befallen you? مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ They were overtaken by poverty and disease and were so horrified, they were so disturbed and provoked and punished until both the Prophet and those who believed in him exclaimed, مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ When will Allah's help come? Ala inna nasrallahi qareeb And Allah's help is really close. This is a verse that generally speaks of the trials and tortures that all the prophets went through, even before the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we take into account that 84 people responded to Nuh, that is one man every 12 or 13 years, Because 48 people for 950 years of da'wah. It took more than 10 years of da'wah, patience, temptation, humiliation, and all sorts of harassment for one man to respond to it. More than 10 years. 12 years for one man to respond to the da'wah. All this, therefore, was endured by the prophets even before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not to mention the problems that Ibrahim alayhi salam experienced on the path of Allah. Very little thought is given to the temptations endured by the Prophets والسلام, from the aspect of admiring them and from the aspect of putting ourselves in their skin, in their place, for a moment, in the way of thinking about what prompted them to do so, what all of them could also have, what they sacrificed and what they suffered from temptation, from evil, from torment in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just because they defended these words. We know all the things that Messenger of Allah وسلم, survived on the path of Allah in the last three years before the Hijrah, at the time of the death of his beloved wife Khadija anha, and his uncle Abu Talib. We know what occurred in this period. Those were the three years in which the Muslims were totally isolated and they were secretly supplied with some food by those who dared to do so. But Muslims went to the toilet in pain due to poor food and living conditions. The cries of children due to hunger were heard all the way to Mecca. But at no time did the Messenger of Allah وسلم, give up. He did not agree to offerings of the mushrikun at the expense of his faith. He did not refuse only the worldly beauties offered to him, the keys of the Kaaba, money, position, power and the like. Some will say because he was a Zahid, because he was a Skatic, a man who knew that the worldly ornaments were short and deluding. No, at this moment when Muslims were deprived of the most basic means of risk, when there was no trade, no contracts, no friendship, no helping or food, but there was hunger, thirst, they were isolated, not even then he relented, gave up, showing us the value of preserving Tawheed, and the danger of shirk, showing us that Muslims should stay away from shirk even if it costs them their freedom, their property. Where are those who mention justifying doing shirk and kufr for the benefit of Muslims? It would then be beneficial for Muslims then in Mecca to eat more, 
it was their physical benefit not to starve so much for the children, not to die of hunger. But even in such a situation, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, did not relent, did not give up. We have to ask ourselves, what is the meaning of those words? Of the words, La ilaha illallah, that bothered the Quraysh so much. What was the meaning of those words? What was the meaning of La ilaha illallah that was so important and so threatening to them? What was so dangerous in the words of La ilaha illallah for mushrikun then? We know that when he called the Quraysh and their arrogant people, leaders and chiefs, he said to them, Say La ilaha illallah, you will be saved. So what is the meaning of that bothered the Quraysh so much? What was it that bothered them so much, frightened them so much, that they offered all the dunya to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, only to deviate from these words, not from saying them, but to deviate from acting upon them, to deviate from the da'wah to Islam. Because the da'wah to Islam, to Tawheed, posed a great threat to the Quraysh. What are the deeds that a Muslim when he understands and applies la ilaha illallah, what he should do that bothered the Quraysh then and bothered the disbelievers today. Had these words la ilaha illallah demanded what these delusional secularists, Sufi or any other groups claim, the Quraysh would certainly have allowed him to do so. They would not offer him anything they offered him, nor would they tempt him with anything they tempted him. But they would give them him and the Muslims, to do it, to rumble and mumble in the mosques, to say, La ilaha illallah, to turn the chaplet or rosary in their hand. If it's a speech, talk as much as you want. If it's a dhikr, roar as much as you want. However, taghut, disbelievers, mushrikun of that time and of this time, they know that these words, La ilaha illallah, they represent manhaj in human life. That the words La ilaha illallah represent methodology. They represent a path and direction in human life. That these words represent the whole system of an individual and a group. That they change man and force him to work for a change in the society in which he lives. That they want to base the law of Allah on the ruins of human passions and satanic precepts. Or being these words, a man must do an effort to bring people, by the permission of Allah, to bring people out of slavery to the slaves of Allah, to the slavery to the Lord of the people, to overthrow their superstitions, just as the Quraysh knew that Shahada destroys their superstitions, their shirk, their tribal devotion, their pagan zeal, their ancestral faith, their customs, etc., so they began to oppose the people of La ilaha illallah to stand in the way of this da'wah. They began to persecute those who called to the words of La ilaha illallah. Mushrikun began to torture those who accepted the meaning of these words. They tried even to kill Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of the importance of these words, because of their enormous effect on society, because of their great effects on mankind, and because of the great danger to rulers and zalims. However, these groups today have distorted the meaning of the Shahada of La ilaha illallah and its reality and the purpose for which they were revealed. So they tell people that these are words that one should say when he wants to do dhikr without any effects of their reality, without any effect on the work and actions of these people, on their orientation, on their love and their hatred. These deluded groups say, say shahada la ilaha illallah once in your life and afterwards you can do whatever you want. It is only important to say la ilaha illallah. Say it once and you will be of the people who are successful, of those who believe, who are believers and even of those who are saved in the hereafter, even if you do not fulfill the foundations of this deen, its foundations and its obligations. They may not say this so openly, literally, but their teaching leads to this result. Say once, La ilaha illallah, and then you can do whatever you want. That is, you can worship whatever you want, you can obey to whomever you want, you can follow whomever you want, from idols or taghut, Although the very words of the Shahada contain Qufr bit-Taghut. 
if these words were put on the scales of reality and questioned by those who can hear the da'is, murjis, polytheists, they would see that the situation is exactly like this and that it is not only in the shrines of Syria, in some temples of Bangladesh and India, but that this belief came from Arabia itself through murji, mushrikun and to all of our regions because they literally do not consider anyone a kafir. That is the reality and these are the consequences of the da'wah or those du'at and shuyukh who say, say shahada once and after that do what you want. And this even leads to the worship of Tagut and it is a reality in this area and other areas. There are people here who will not say to anyone that he is a mushrik, that he is a kafir, until he himself says for himself that he is a kafir. Or you have those who, when a person curses Allah or Islam, they stipulate and put multitude of imaginary obstacles for the taqweer. Did you bring him a proof? Did you establish an argument over him? So they put conditions and obstacles that only Allah knows where they did get from. All this proves that the true meaning of the Shahada La ilaha illallah has been distorted and by this we do not want to do takfir of the people to expel them from Islam but we want to see who are the Muslims who are the people who understood the importance and significance of the Shahada La ilaha illallah who carried them out who fulfilled their arkan and shurut